first step is to build the box. So what we're going to do today in this video is build the box itself. Uh, we're going to glue the components together. Uh, we'll talk about sanding it and then talk about finishing it, getting the box put together, getting it ready to go so you can build the final guitar. Uh, if you look at the components that we give you, there's a, uh, there's a back plate. It uh, has just one big hole up on this end. If you look at these uh, pieces we give you, we use birch ply. Uh, it's plywood with a birch uh, veneer on the top of it. Uh, sometimes the patterns are very striking. Usually, the way it comes is one side is kind of perfect veneer. The other side occasionally will have some repairs, uh, some little, uh, some little uh, checks, some little bad spots on it. Uh, so you kind of have to kind of look it over because there's not necessarily an up or a down. Uh, but I kind of like this side looking at it, and so I'm going to put that down. Then we look at the other components that come with it. There are two center pieces. They're exactly the same, but keep in mind there is a top and a bottom. You just can't uh, put them anyway. And the way you tell the top is you'll notice when you look back here, this is where the bridge is going to go. What you'll see is a little slot right here. And that slot is where the ground wire is going to go. Now on the bottom piece, it doesn't matter. On the second piece down, it does matter because that's how we're going to feed the ground and get it underneath the bridge. And then lastly, there's the top. Again, uh, birch ply. Uh, we put the best side up when we put it in the machine and machine it. Uh, and what you'll notice is if you look close, what you'll see is some little marks. And those are markers for where the screw holes will be when we attach the pickup, the bridge, and the control plate. So it's all ready to go. So again, there is a top on this. Make sure you have, this, uh, have these holes uh, facing up. So, uh, then we're ready to go ahead and get it glued together. We'll put a little uh, backer underneath here so I don't get uh, glue on my tabletop. Strongly recommend that you use any of the wood glues. This is Type Bond uh, original wood glue. It works well. It's a great product. Uh, you're not going to have any problems with it. Uh, I get this in the 8 ounce size, that seems to be about, about the right size. If you get too big of a size, what happens is it just kind of gets old and stuff. So uh, I, buy, I tend to buy the smaller ones even though I use it a lot. So, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take the first ring and I'm going to put uh, glue on the bottom side of the ring and then flip it over. One of the things that's really nice about this tight bond is they have kind of this tip that, that's kind of wide. And so what it allows you to do is we can apply the glue, get a nice little stream of the glue going. Get it all the way over around the perimeter. Put a little in here. Okay, put a little on these, these arms here. Don't need to on the bottom one put much out here on these tabs. And I'm going to explain what those for are for in kind of a later video. So now we've got it glued. We've got the glue applied. We're going to come down and we're going to set it on the back plate. And what I will tell you is take your time and get this done right. We want this to line up as perfect as possible because the par these parts are all cut exactly the same and if you stack them and glue them all together uh, the sides are going to be pretty much flat and straight and it won't require as much sanding. If you get a mismatch on those you're going to run into a problem later on so take your time make sure that you have it right. What you could even do if you want to at this point after you just glued these two pieces together you could clamp this up and then come back in a couple hours and put the next one on. But I'm going to be a little greedy and going to do it all, all four pieces together. So I've got this first one on there and again I'm really happy with the way it's working. So I'm getting ready to glue my second one in. Now make sure, as we've talked about, there is a top and a bottom to this and we're looking for this little groove, this wire groove. It'll play an important part later on. We'll show you. So we want to make sure we're going to have that up. So what I do now is come on the top of this, go across, I'm going to come down these two little arms, then I'm going to come down the side, come across, 
come down the other side put some glue here in the center part on these arms and I'm ready to go I'm going to take this again making sure to have the slot up facing up kind of slide it around a little bit move the glue a little bit check all the sides with your fingers make sure you got it nice and smooth kind of keep your fingers clean one of the things I want to bring up at this point is if you decide that you want to stain this part stain your guitar you need to be really really careful not to get any of the glue up on this surface because if you get glue up here and it dries even if you sand it when you come back to stain it the stain won't take where that glue is so what I'd even suggest is that if you want to before you put it together if you know you're going to stain it go ahead and stain these parts first and then glue it together that way uh, you have a little bit of protection there but keep your fingers nice and clean uh, and try and uh, not put glue on the spots not too worried about the sides because we're going to sand those pretty heavily uh, but we we can't sand on the surface too much because we'd sand right through the veneer so i've got this pretty square lined up pretty well so now what i'm going to do is go ahead and put the top on going to go ahead and put my bead of glue across the front down the side down the other side, put some on these legs, put some around here. You want to get a good amount of glue, but you don't want to overdo it uh, uh, because if you put a nice little bead here, when you flatten it down, you're going to get a nice, uh, good uh, glue joint. So again, I got the top. Again, there is a top surface. Make sure to look for these hole indentations, these markers. They've got to be face up. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to position this, move it around just a little bit to kind of spread the glue, get it lined up as close as possible. Now you notice what I did is I, on my workbench, I have a towel down here to kind of, you know, keep from scratching stuff. It's a little nicer surface to work on. But to do this, I took a little piece of wood, put underneath here uh, to glue this, do this gluing operation. So I've got it kind of all pulled together. Again, I'm checking the sides, I'm checking the corners, checking the front, the back. It's lining up pretty well. Uh, looks pretty good, ready to go. And you'll notice I have kind of a mountain of clamps here. So what I'm gonna do is kind of move down to the edge here and I'm gonna slide it off and I'm gonna take these clamps and they work really well, these, these, these nice clamps here. And a lot of times when you have glue surfaces and you put a, a clamp on them, they'll tend to shift or slide one side to the, one side to the other. So I'm going to be real careful just to get it started and I'm going to come in and I'm going to clamp an end and I can see that it's already moving a little bit. It has moved. So I'm going to have to change it around a little bit. Mess with the clamps a little bit. I want to take the time and make sure we get this right because it's really critical. Back that off a little bit. It just so happens that um, this top board has a little bit of a warp in it and I'm kind of fighting that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it around and I'm going to work from this other end that seems to be a little bit flatter for the time being. I'm going to flatten that out in a moment, but again, I've got this nice and square here. I'm really happy with it. But even that, when I put it on there, I can see that it's moving a little bit. All right, so I've got one on that end. I'm going to come back down to this end that I was working. Again, make it sure it gets nice and square. Then I'm going to put them on the corners down here. Again, now it's a good time before I get too many clamps on there to do some checking. I can see so just a little bit. Sometimes you have to wrestle a little bit with it. 
But you want to take the time and make sure it's right. Because it'll make a big difference when you're getting ready to sand it. Pretty close, pretty happy with it. So then I just start to add clamps. Want to put clamps on every corner. Then we want to come in and we want to clamp it in the middle. And then we can add a few more looking at it, uh, kind of examine it, make sure that it's uh, everything's looking good. And if you got more clamps, use them. You never have too many clamps on something. So there, now I've got it clamped together. Pretty happy with the way everything lined up, nice and close, nice and square. Uh, so we've got it glued. You can see a little bit of squeeze out on the side, which is okay. Don't want too much because that just uh, gums up the whole sanding process. But we've got this uh, glued together and we're going to go ahead and set it aside. Now once you have the part glued together and you take the clamps off, uh, usually two, three hours are more than enough for that to, to glue for this application, you'll be fine. If you want to let it set overnight, that'll be fine. But once you're done, you'll come up with a pretty nice little box. Really nice and solid. Uh, I think it's going to be a great uh, box for a build. Uh, you can see uh, the, this is the top. Again, you can see where we're going to put the pickup. We're going to put the control plate, we're going to want run a ground wire underneath and it'll be underneath the bridge so we get a nice ground on our system. What I did is uh, I have the benefit of having a fairly large uh, belt sander here. So when I got it done I was able to go over to my belt sander and sand this, this, the sides pretty flat pretty quickly and pretty effectively. And once I got that done then I came over and I was doing that with about 100 to 120 grit. When I got that done, I came over here and I did the finishing sanding with my orbital. I basically have just an orbital sander. Um, mine's hooked up to a vacuum system, try and keep the dust down a little bit. Uh, and then I basically used a 150 and uh, just sanded the surface down. Uh, So after a couple of steps of sanding, again starting off with uh, 80 to 100, going to 150, you can finish up with uh, 220 if you want. I really have a nice smooth box. I mean you can just feel it uh, when you run your hands over it, how absolutely smooth uh, this turned out. Uh, great, great box. Nice and solid the way we've glued it together. We've got those uh, inner layers glued together. We've got the top and the bottom glued on. Nice and solid. And again because of the shape and the geometry where we've glued the top to it, uh, it's really nice and solid. This is going to be a great little box to, uh, to build uh, the guitar. Okay, so once you got the box done, the next step is to put a finish on it. And you've got lots of options. You can, uh, they're just a, a myriad of options for ways to finish boxes. Uh, what I did, and for this demo, I did something very basic. Uh, I, all I did was look at my little assortment of paint cans over here and I found this green paint and I had a full can I thought what the heck I'll try it and then what I did was I went ahead and put on two or three coats I followed the instructions uh, I've got some other videos online that talk about finishing uh, boxes how you put a finish on them uh, on, on cigar boxes but a lot of the same principles apply so I went ahead and painted it green now when you put that green uh, paint on here it all, always kind of looks a little bit blotchy and I always find that it works really well to put the paint on there, let it dry for two or three days, get a nice hard finish, and then come back and sand it. Now what you can do you see is that I kind of intentionally kind of over sanded in some locations. I actually sand, sanded off the finish. Kind of gives it this kind of this rugged um, aged look and this again for a demo I thought hey that'll be fine uh, we'll get it going. So, so that's a finish. Now what I could do is I could come back and put a clear coat finish over this. Um, probably wouldn't want to put, make it too shiny. I could put um, you know, a semi-gloss on it or I could even put a flat finish on there. 
there's a lot you can do. And this is the exciting part about building these. There are all kinds of options. I mean, if you want to stain it, you can stain it the way you want it. If you want to paint it, you can paint it the way you want it. Um, you know, you can get really, uh, really creative and you could put some different uh, materials on it. You can cover it with a, a wood veneer if you have that and you like it. You can cover it uh, with some labels. You can cover it with some art. There's just all kinds of ways you can finish this box. For this demo, again, all I'm doing is just a simple distressed paint job. And so that's uh, where we're going to go. So right now, the box is pretty much done and ready to go. The only thing we have to do is we have to uh, drill an opening or, or drill the hole for the neck. And, and let me show you how we do that process. We need to cut a hole or drill a hole in the end to, to accept the neck. And so what we have to do is, again, up here on this end where the pickup is, that's where the neck is going to go in. Uh, but before we do that, we have to prepare uh, the neck and get it right. Now, if you remember in the uh, introduction video, I talked about this part, which is the spacer for the neck. Um, again, we're using the baritone uh, or the 20 inch scale neck that we have. That's what we're going to use on this build. Uh, this was made for baritone ukulele. Uh, when we're going to a guitar and we're going to put a pickup on there, and we're going to put a bridge on there, we need to lift the neck up a little bit. So I have this, uh, I have this little spacer. Uh, simply uh, apply it uh, and glue it, uh, glue it in place. I use just uh, super glue. I glue it in place and get it ready. And it has a nice little effect on raising this neck up, just about a hundred thousand, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch. And I find that. To work out really really well so this is one that I, where I have it already glued in place uh, nice and solid uh, I used in this application I thought it was fine to use super glue put a good uh, dose of super glue on there glue clamp and we're ready to go now what we have to do is we have to find the center hole we got to put the hole in place and we're going to first thing we're going to do is we got to find the center on this it's very critical that we line the neck up with the center because the pickups lined up to the center, the bridge is lined up to the center, so we want to make sure that the neck is lined up to the center. I've showed you this tool before that I've used. It's a zero, a center finding ruler. Uh, they work really well. Uh, you just basically line it up. Um, these boxes are about seven inches wide before you start sanding it, so we might be a little bit less. So what I've done is I've come over here to three and a half. I've come over here to three and a half. Uh, and I can now see that the center is just about right there. So that's the center of the box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a center line down partially. Whoops. So I now know where the center line is. I've, I've marked the center line, uh, so we're ready to go. One of the ways I like to do it is I take the neck, I take the neck, and I kind of find, lean it up against there, get it secure, and then I, I mark kind of the center of where the bolt is, so I know where I've got to cut my hole. So you can see I've got dropped a center line. I've made a mark where the bolt would line up and I'm ready to go. Uh, I always like to start off and I have a, a, an ice pick. I have awls and stuff, but I like to go ahead and mark the center of that hole, make it a little bit bigger. So now I've got that precisely located. Uh, let me see if I can find my drill. I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch bit you need at least a quarter of an inch, but I prefer to use the three-eighths of an inch. So I've drilled a three-eighths inch hole there in the center. And it looks like we've got a really, really nice fit. 
What we need to do is we need to come in and we need to take some uh, measurements, um, find our tape measure, um, make sure that we're centered up again, uh, about two and a half that way. About two and a half that way. So I'm lined up. I've got a little bit of room that I can move it from side to side. And what I'll do is when I get ready to do the final assembly, I'll put the nuts on there, snug it up fairly tight, and then move it a little bit to get the final location, make sure I'm in the center and tighten it up. But for now, we're good to go. We've got the box glued. We've assembled it. We've sanded it. We're going to go ahead and put our finish on it. We've drilled the hole. You can drill the hole before we put the finish on. We've got the hole. This box is now ready, or this box is now ready for assembly. So we'll cover the assembly in the next video. Thanks a bunch.